I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 119, N Fisherman Bass Hunter 64. Released in 1999, this game was developed by Gearhead Entertainment and published by Take-Two Interactive. Whoa, Take-Two, that's a big name. They've put out some games you may have heard of, like NBA 2K, Max Payne, Grand Theft Auto, Bioshock, and Borderlands, just to name a few. You know, I wasn't too thrilled about rolling a fishing game, but hearing this, I bet this is gonna be sick. This is the second fishing game we've played in this challenge, after the Japanese exclusive Bass Rush Eco Gear Power Worm Championship. That one honestly wasn't half bad, although I can't use my awesome fishing controller for this one. I've only been fishing in real life once, and it was quite boring. Hopefully this game is more fun than that. Let's get into it. The game has a career mode, so that's what we'll be doing to beat this game. You can choose which character to play as, of which there are two of. Both of them have freaky smiles. Then I could choose either championship or fish for fun. Well, apparently you're not allowed to have fun if you pick the championship. I started with fish for fun to try to get a feel for the game. In the gameplay, you're standing on your fishing boat ready to sit still for hours. I cast the line like two feet and a bluegill was caught on the line. Not really knowing what was going on, I just kind of yanked the joystick around a bit. It said I caught it, then it had a message congratulating me, but said it wasn't a tournament fish, so I had to throw it back. You're able to move the boat around while you stand there, and this just doesn't make sense at all. How the heck is this boat moving? Unless I'm meant to believe the wind is blowing it in the exact direction I tell it to move or something. Or maybe our character's using telekinesis. Who knows. After fiddling around a bit, I cast the line into a huge pile of fish. They kept biting it, but then they would just let go. Finally though, a fish was caught and a battle ensued. You can reel the line in with A and pull the line in any direction using the joystick. Unlucky for me, this fish managed to escape. Over 20 minutes later, I hadn't really done much of anything. It was then I realized you can actually drive the boat in a different view. This is the singular fun thing this game has to offer. I'm sure you're wondering, no, it doesn't let you crash the boat. If you drive into something, it slows you down automatically. Huge missed opportunity there for the devs. So I still sucked at actually fishing and driving the boat around wasn't getting anything achieved. Looking into the game's manual, along with some advice from people familiar with fishing, brought a breakthrough. The meter on the right is representing the tension on the line. The yellow arrow on the right is kind of like a suggested limit for what your line can handle, and the one on the left is the rod's drag. By increasing the drag, you allow more tension on the line, making it easier to pull a fish in. The caveat is, if it goes past the arrow on the right, it's very likely to break. When your line's about to break, it plays a sound like someone's flicking a rubber band constantly. It seems like setting the drag around the maximum allowed gives the most efficient results. Now well over a half hour with no fish caught other than that initial bluegill, I was losing hope. Normally I don't do this till the end of the game, but I looked up the cheat codes for this one. Don't worry, I didn't use any that actually helped me. But if you enter rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, it turns the boat into a bathtub. <laughs> it actually changes the physics of the boat too. It's way faster, but it's like impossible to control. An hour into playing the game, I finally did something right enough to catch a real fish. The combination of setting the drag correctly and managing how I reel it in until it's about to break worked really well. Pulling the line the correct direction is important too, which is why you see the guy dancing around like a moron while he's battling the fish. Never mind that this is a catfish and only bass are allowed in the tournaments. Just let me have this one, alright? It'd been an entire hour with nothing. Well, guess that's enough of a warm-up. Time to check out the actual tournament. The first one takes place at Lake Arthur in the lake's Hidden River section. It's a one-day affair, and I need to get top three to move on to the next tournament. I believe the game uses real-life locations, but I'm not familiar enough with pro fishing to know if that's true. It gives some advice for what's coming up next. There's a lot that goes into being successful in this game. The time of day, weather condition, what time of year it is, the type of bait you use, what type of water you fish in. If you want to become a master of this game, you need to take a full university course essentially. You can purchase equipment before a tournament, but you start with no points for the shop, so rip that idea. 
There are a few things you start with available for use. You can select either an 8 pound or 12 pound line. The heavier the line, the less likely it is to break. However, it's more visible to fish, so they're less likely to bite. Then there's a bunch of different baits. For now, you just have a green one that I guess is supposed to look like a dead fish, and a blue one that's supposed to blend in with the water more. Or something like that. I'm not an expert. You get a time penalty for swapping equipment. At first it seemed unfair, but I guess it does make sense. In real life, you'd have to spend time swapping out your gear. Well, after setting all that up, it's time to fish... somewhere. Other than just knowledge of the area, the only help you have is the fish finder. It's using sonar to detect fish near the boat. The top value is always zero, I'm not sure why it's even there. The bottom left value is the max depth that's scanning, and the bottom right value is the depth your boat is floating above. I believe the dotted pattern represents the bottom of the water, then the fish that scroll by represent the size of the fish as well as where it's at. The filled in fish are directly under the boat, and the hollow ones are next to it. So using that I found a spot with a few bass. I got one on the hook and the battle started. With my thicker line I had an easy time reeling it in. Old bass never stood a chance. When I pulled it in it said it was 3 pounds 2 ounces. Not bad, but I better get a couple bigger ones to ensure victory. Oh man, this is intense. I hooked another bass and I realized it doesn't matter at all much what you do when you're catching the smaller fish. Like, look at this guy getting an insane core workout in while he fishes. Now that's efficient. This one was two pounds flat. I caught a few more fish, but I never beat out that first one. The event ended at noon, just five in-game hours of fishing. It seems that one in-game minute equates to about five real-life seconds. I figured I did horrible, but to my surprise, I was in second place. In fact, I was just a few ounces off first. Your score is based off the cumulative weight of your five biggest bass. Well, nice. I'll take a win on my first try. Maybe this game won't be so bad to beat after all. On to the next tournament, Summer on Shannon Run. It gives some tips like, oh, the bass are hungry, try these places or these specific lures. Don't listen to any of that trash. The only consistent way to find bass in this game is look near structures like a dock or a pile of rocks or a fallen tree. I had some points from the last tourney, so I bought a Jitterbug Topwater Lure. Whatever the heck that is. Real quick, I'll talk about the graphics and music in this one. The graphics are honestly not all that bad. The water texture looks pretty good for this console. It's a bit laggy, but you're not really doing much anyway, so you probably don't notice. When you're fishing, there's just silence and the sounds of nature. Ah, the great outdoors. Something us gamers will only ever experience by playing In Fisherman Bass Hunter 64. There is a song that plays when you're fighting a fish, and it's a bit catchy, I'll admit. It kinda sounds like a great value version of Electric Day Chocobo from Final Fantasy VII. Anyway, I was just doing my thing, fishing for bass and sitting around. I was making my guy do another ab workout when I noticed something peculiar during the catching animation. Is that a bullet hole in the boat? Like what kind of fishing game is this man? You know, drive-by fishing would make this a bit more exciting to be honest. I caught quite a few fish here. The spot I was in was just littered with them so I had plenty to choose from. I caught a few that were above 3 pounds but that was still the biggest I found. Before I knew it, it was 6pm and the tournament had ended. Man, time sure doesn't fly when you play this game. Somehow, I was in first place by quite a lot. No one else even caught more than three fish. It shows your character doing a cheesy celebration with his fishing rod and there's a banner congratulating you. Well, you'd hope the game is over, but it sure isn't. Now we're fishing on Shannon Run again, but this time it's fall. Whoa man, never know what to expect out of this one. Funnily enough, I accidentally cast my line as soon as I spawned in, and wouldn't you know it, it landed right on a bass. Solid little three pounder right there for free. I guess it's a bit neat that the sky has an orange tint to it now that it's fall. The water's looking a bit sketchy though. In this tournament, I had my first disaster. I hooked a pretty big looking bass, but I got a bit too antsy. No. The line snapped and it was long gone. Not to mention I got an 8 minute penalty to replace my line. Another thing in this tournament is I broke the 4 pound barrier for the first time. It honestly didn't look all that big when I hooked it. 
The game calls it a dandy little bass. That was beaten quite soon after by a 4 pound 12 ounce fish. Oh man, I was dominating now. So by this point I was quite comfortable catching the fish. One thing I never figured out in this entire playthrough was how to stop the bass from jumping. It just felt like RNG if the fish would swim down or toward the surface. When it jumped out of the water, it would escape nearly every time and man, it was so tilting. At this point I'd caught a few 4 pound fish and I figured I was in a good enough spot to win. However, the tournament still had 3 hours left. Man, I don't want to wait that long. This is where my speedrun tech came into play. It's pretty advanced, but I'll try to explain it. See, you just switch to a different part of the water in the pause menu and it gives you a 30 minute penalty. Spam this over and over until the tournament ends. It's tough to execute, but I mastered it quickly. My intuition was correct and I ended up in first place by quite a lot. Tom Jenkins is trash. In fact, these names are kind of wild. Jojo Troller, Buzz Baits, Stubby Nets, Fanny Bateman? Who the heck are these people? It's now winter, but we can't stop fishing. Come on, we're addicted. So we're heading to Florida's Lake Palmer. I'd saved up quite a bit of points from tournaments now, so I decided to splurge a bit and buy a fast action bait cast rod. I feel like a rod upgrade is the biggest bang for your buck. This thing had an 18 pound line, quite an upgrade. Now I could set my drag to the max and I'd still be okay. In Florida, it seems like the bass like to hover around the deep water areas. These fish just aren't interested in eating for whatever reason, so I had to get used to them completely ignoring me. Come on man, this plastic thing looks so tasty, just bite it. Um, yeah, I did some fishing, you know, casting, reeling, pulling in. I absolutely annihilated the competition once again, first place by a landslide. Now we're on Lake Chase and it's raining. I bought a jig lure package this time, and this is fishing engineering at its finest right here, folks. You can customize it with a rattler or not to add noise. The size makes it sink more or less, pick what color skirt it wears, and you can put food on it if you want. These fish don't stand a chance against the might of the human brain. In all seriousness, this ended up being the best lure for me in the entire game. It was so hard to fish here, like nothing would bite. I managed to catch a few decent ones though, and I sneaked my way into second place. You know what? I'll take it. The next tournament brings us back to Lake Arthur. The stakes could not be higher here though. If we finish top 3 in this tournament, we'll achieve semi-pro status. I thought we were already a pro, what gives? This was so frustrating. It was the first time I felt like I just couldn't catch a single fish. None of them would take the bait no matter which lure I tried. Thankfully, the game saves between each tournament, so you can just reset if things are going horribly. With about an hour or so of grinding, I caught some tiny fish, and I guess everyone else struggled because it was enough for first place. I was officially a semi-pro. As a semi-pro, I can only finish first or second place to continue on. Not only that, the tournaments last two full days, which just, god, it takes so long. The point rewards are bigger now, though, which is pretty nice. We're headed to Lake Arthur once again. Being a semi-pro, I had to make a statement to all these other chumps. That's why I pulled in a 5 pound, 6 ounce bass. Ooh, baby. Apparently when they get this big, they start to have some fight in them. According to the game, that is. I didn't stop there, though. I managed to catch a 6 pound, 3 ounce bass. Game says I can't go wrong with fish like these. It just kept getting bigger and bigger, though. My next catch? 7 pounds, 3 ounces. The game just says that's a solid fish. Guess they ran out of ideas for these messages. With that, I knew I just had to be in first, and yeah, it wasn't even slightly close. The problem is, this is a two day event, so we're not even done yet. Utilizing my speed tech, I performed a trick thought to be TAS only. This is the day two skip. Shoutouts to Summoning Salt, what a legend. Little did I know though, your ranking is actually the combination of your best 5 catches per day. Lucky for me, my day 1 performance was so good that I was still in first by quite a bit. I could have just stayed home and still won. Well, now it's a 2 day tournament in Florida in November. I bought a power worm lure and it kind of sucked. 
It's supposed to be a more efficient worm, but the bass never liked this thing. What a waste of points. Oh yeah, the game randomly crashed during this tournament. I wasn't even doing anything weird, come on man. Thankfully though, since it saves, there wasn't really any progress lost. I broke my fishing record once again in this tournament, pulling in an 8 pound 6 ounce bass. The game even says that's a great fish. That thing's almost as big as that big mouth billy bass my uncle has on his wall. I was in first place by so much after day one. The day two skip isn't really necessary, like it's pretty easy to find some kind of fish, even if they're small. This ensured my victory, and I was becoming the best around. Now, I've pretty much covered all there is to cover about this game. You just fish, over, and over, and over again. Pay attention to that timer in the top left, because this game broke me. I won the next tournament, and it was actually a bit close. This was a bad sign. In the next tourney, I didn't even perform the day two skip. I just couldn't get a single bass to take my bait, so I got zero catches. Luckily, my day one was good enough, though. Another win, this time in a rare one-day tournament for a semi-pro like myself. It didn't last long though, as the next tournament, they were so excited to let me know this was a three-day tourney. Gee, things. Feel like the kid who got Mega Blocks at Christmas. There was a weird graphical glitch in this area. Not sure if it's my HDMI mod or if the game is just like this. Probably the game. Here's a good example of what I mean by the fish jumping being so stupid. I'm holding the rod down, but it still jumps. I don't know man, is there like a technique people use in real life to stop this? I was getting so annoyed when they jumped, like there's nothing I could do. I crushed it in day one and three, but I had a rough day two. I squeaked by with just a few ounces to spare. The next tournament was a big one. If I got top two here, I'd officially be a pro fisherman. That's always been my biggest dream, oh man. I was way too cocky after all those other wins, so I ended this one early. Little did I know, Freda Muldoon and Stan Stumpkin really wanted to become pro fishermen too. I had lost my first tournament. I was absolutely devastated. Luckily for me, I can just turn the game off and pretend this never happened. I did about the same on my next go at it, but I guess they didn't want it this time. This revealed something frustrating about the game. Not only is catching all these fish filled with so much RNG, but the other people's scores are RNG as well. You can do really well, but the game just decides they did better. So now that I was a pro fisherman, the only option was getting first place in future tournaments. What, did you think becoming a pro was the goal? Oh no, there's so much more. Time for another three day tourney. There was a bridge in this area that had no collision, or maybe it's an incorporeal bridge. Pops took me down in this one. You can save in between days, but it's a bit risky. If you do too poorly in your previous days, you're just kind of screwed. Apparently, I decided to turn on the big head mode cheat here. It looks absolutely ridiculous when he's pulling the fish up, but good job devs, way to add big head mode. This tournament was so stupid. I ended up resetting the entire thing because I could never finish in first. Like look how big the variance in their scores is. This guy nearly had 30 pounds on day one. That's an average of six pounds per fish. Get out of here. I had reset so many times by this point, I was losing my mind. Finally, I had a decent run. Day two was the hardest to catch fish on and I found a big one that tried its hardest to get away. It looked so glitchy when it was coming out of the water, but a six pound fish on day two was huge. And this did end up being the run. The game decided to troll me so hard by making all the other people do awful. Like the one time I finally have a good showing, they all just sucked. This game just played mind games with me. Now it was time. The last tournament in this cursed game. Three days of fishing in October on three different lakes. But this time, things were different. I'd be going up against the fishing legend, John Swan. I don't think this is a real person because Google comes up with an Aussie singer, but I'd like to believe he's real. After day one, old Johnny Swan was in fifth place. I thought this guy was supposed to be good. This tournament wasn't as bad as the last one actually. I think I just had good RNG, but who cares? John Swan was defeated. After nearly 16 hours of this garbage, I was done. Oh my goodness. It shows the usual celebration ceremony, then it gives you an overall score over the entire career mode. For winning the final tournament, you get your picture on the cover of the N Fisherman magazine. Totally worth it, yep. 
But yeah, that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating In Fisherman Bass Hunter 64. This one is beyond frustrating. They tried to make the game be as realistic as possible. This means researching all the areas, weather patterns, bass behavior, what types of lures are good when, stuff like that. When in reality, your average person who's into gaming isn't going to be into fishing. And if you do land that intersection of people who like both gaming and fishing, they probably don't want to fish like a pro. Their idea of fishing is chilling with their friends, drinking a bunch of beer. They don't care if they catch anything. I just don't see who this game's supposed to be for. Why was this created? There is zero reason to play this. If you want to catch fish on the N64, go play Ocarina of Time. I gave it a 0 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 4.5 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. There are 271 games on the list. Could be anything. Who knows what it'll be? Uh... Three, two, one, go! 202? What's that? Okay, we are playing Roadsters. I feel like I've scrolled this list enough that I have an idea of all the games that are on it. I've never seen this on this list. Did this like get injected? What is Roadsters? But uh, yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.